everyone. Welcome back to Archetypical and our We Are Archetype series, specifically around meeting our team. Uh, as I've always said at the beginning of these, our, our most valuable asset here at Archetype uh, is our people. Uh, and we want to be able to showcase that not only for our clients, but even people that maybe are considering joining Archetype and being a part of this amazing team. Uh, so why don't we dive right in and, and bring Blair Lewis in. Uh, Blair recently joined our team. Excited to have her here. And uh, I like to start off with a little bit of a fun question, Blair. Uh, All right. If you had to pick only one cuisine, mm. you had to, you can only eat that cuisine for the rest of your life, what would it be? So I think I'd have to go with sushi. Su oh, even more like super specific of sushi. Yeah. I'm a big sushi fan. Big sushi fan. Now, when Wait, you say tie between sushi and Indian, but. I'm not okay. sure. Are we gonna win out with sushi? With for sushi, are you saying like sushi rolls or like the? Is it? Ma I always mix up if it's like sashimi or maki or like the like raw pieces. Yeah, I mean, I like it all, but Great. probably if I something to eat the rest of my life, probably the rolls. You know, mix in some of the different What's your flavors. Favorite sushi roll. Ooh, that's tough. Um. There is a sushi restaurant here in Atlanta that has a, a role called Hunger Games, and it's uh, really good. So it's got like tuna in the middle, a uh, dot of uh, sriracha, just, and then topped with jalapeno. It's just really good. I love it. I'll, I volunteer as tribute to eat that. Uh, <laughs> so, sounds good. <laughs> So why don't we have you start with kind of giving us an, an intro and, and walk us through kind of your professional career thus far and, and even what your role is here at Archetype. Sure. So as you said earlier, I'm Blair Lewis. Um, so I am originally from a really small town in Tennessee. Uh, we have Walmart. Um, I guess since I've left, they've gotten some more bigger things, but um, definitely grew up in a rural area. Uh, went to the University of Tennessee for my undergrad and graduate degrees. Um, when I was there, the head of the accounting department sent out an email about um, a Deloitte leadership conference, and it was in Phoenix, Arizona. So hailing from this little small town, I had actually never ridden on an airplane. Um, so here I was at 20. And I was like, of course, I'm applying for this uh, conference and I'm going to fly on my first airplane. So um, Deloitte picked two people from each one of the like larger state schools um, and I was selected. And so me and an another guy from the University of Tennessee, we went out to Phoenix and I had my first airplane ride. So that's a little fun fact about me. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of how my career got started. So if you got accepted to this conference, they automatically... Um, gave you an interview for their internship program so came down to atlanta interviewed um, interned with them twice actually um, and then came on full time from there um, and so i really enjoyed my time at deloitte a lot of i like a lot of things they teach you um, when you come in about owning your career and you know networking and everything um, but really kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. And so after that, um, I went to work for Print Pack. Um, and so what drove me to Print Pack was it was just, you know, very family oriented. Um, it was a, a, a mid-sized mid private company, uh, family owned. And so um, I worked there for about 12 years. Um, I started out um, in the accounting department. Um, I came in kind of going to be like ERP system help and then I got there and they're like, hey, do you want to learn Hyperion? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, and so I, I kind of got into the Hyperion space and then was really fortunate to have some mentors and advocates for me there that really helped um, me kind of get experience in other parts of the organization. So I did a little tenure in treasury, um, a tenure in um, FP&A and pricing, and really just kind of got to learn a lot about business and the different facets of it that, you know, really helped me when I landed back in the one stream space, be able to, I think, be better in that space because of, of having those exposures. Um, and so, you know, that, that was one of the things in coming into Archetype that I really was looking for was that kind of like family value culture and um, definitely feel like I hit it out of the park with that and joining. So 
Um, to answer your last question, Mitchell, I, I joined um, as a senior manager in the OneStream space. Um, right. And so I, I think I've been here for about three to four weeks and I'm really enjoying it and, and getting my hands dirty in my first project. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and now I, I love that you kind of went from college to consultancy to industry and now back to kind of that consultancy space. Yeah. Uh, how do you see that or what motivated you in particular to kind of go back to consulting and how do you feel like that has maybe changed? How's your opinion changed from consulting of back with Deloitte being an in industry and now coming now? Yeah. So at Deloitte during my first two inter internships, I was on the SOX business cycle controls and that really interests me because I'm kind of a curious person and I want to know the ins and outs of how things work. Um, and then when I came back full time, they put me on IT general controls. And so, you know, our, it, I just that really wasn't my background. I'm an accounting CPA by trade. And so kind of what part of what motivated me to leave was really wanting to kind of progress my career back in that accounting um, world. Um, and and so that kind of helped project me there. Plus, I just I'm a problem solver. I want to get problems. I want to get my hands on problems and solve those problems. And that really gives me a lot of you know satisfaction. Um, so I, you know, went into industry. I loved how much I learned in industry. Um, and, you know, I think coming back into consulting, you know, it was really, I had been in this role, um, with OneStream, at this company for about five years, and we had a very mature OneStream environment there. And I just kind of felt like, you know, there's really so much more to learn in the OneStream space. Um, but to be able to do that, I really needed to go out and see other industries and see other ways that people were using OneStream. And, um, you know, that was going to be my ticket to really mastering OneStream and being able to kind of understand the product in totality. And so that was kind of what, you know, prompted the move back to consulting was really just that desire to continue to learn and grow in the space. Yeah, makes sense. I feel like in your role, even at Printpack, you almost kind of operated with a consultant mind even in that like you mentioned they were like hey do you want to learn hyperion and like essentially they had a problem for you to solve around that what they were doing with hyperion at the time and then you did that now in one stream component and implementing one stream for them uh and even went and got your ocp lead architect certification on the yeah. industry side which i don't think there's very many people and folks on the industry side that have gotten that certification. So big kudos to you on, on, on doing that and taking that step to, to, to go get that certification. Yeah. I mean, that test was tough. I took it pretty early back in 20, I think 21. I was like, right, right after John and Aaron from Archetype took it, I, I heard about it from them and I was like, all right, yeah, let me see. Let's just see. And I tell you, I mean, it really took me back to my CPA studying days. Um, which I know you're not a CPA, but in the CPA world, there's a program called Becker and you spend every Friday night with Becker. That's your date. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, yeah, I mean, it was tough. I remember telling my husband, I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out to, to do these types of tests anymore. Cause I'm just, you know, a lot older than I was, you know, at 21, 22. Yeah, it was tough. It was, it was really tough, but, um, but I'm glad I did it because being on the industry side, some of the stuff we didn't use. Right. And so I really had to teach myself out of a book um, or watching some of the one stream videos, how, how to do some of this stuff. And so it really advanced my horizon. And, and honestly, I remember thinking when I was studying for it, like, Oh, well, we could do this, we could do that, you know? And, and so it, it's a really good yet hard process to go through. Yeah. Do you feel like that process and that exam is all like, is at least a, a key key part of what piqued your interest in all the other capabilities of the platform and wanting to to do more of that yeah so i think that's fair um and really just you know trying to think through as you're going through this you know study you're studying for it and you're watching all the videos it's like okay well that doesn't necessarily apply to my current situation but what type of industries or what type of clients might use it and how you could you know, configure or design an application. And it was just, you know, like it, it was challenging. It was fun. And um, it, yeah, it, it really piqued my interest in, in all the ways that you could deploy uh, one stream and, and all of the capabilities it has. Yeah, that's great. Now, one question I like to ask all of our team 
uh, overall is kind of not only for individuals who are maybe early in their career or in college, uh, but even kind of just thinking, looking back at your own now career that you've had, what advice would you give your college self um, around kind of career and, and what they're doing? What, what advice would you give them? Yeah. So I think like I spent the last 12, 10 to 12 years fighting fate, you know, I don't necessarily know that I believe in fate per se, but I don't really know how else to describe the trajectory that my career has gone. Um, you know, I mentioned at Deloitte, I came in, I was really interested in the business cycle controls, you know, really learning about the controls in place and each one of the accounting functions. And when I came back and started full time, I was kind of staffed on IT general controls projects. And, you know, that was for sure a sink or swim moment, you know, when they're like, hey, go test Linux. And I'm like, but I'm a CPA. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, that was kind of the very first start of where my career started kind of going off on this kind of accounting and IT blending. And um, so, you know, then I went to print pack really to try to get back into the accounting space and I get there and, you know, start working. And then, you know, the controller comes to me and he's like, we think you have a lot of capabilities. We want you to learn Hyperion. And so I'm like, okay, you know, and then I mentioned earlier, I was very fortunate to be able to move around a lot in the organization, you know, but one thing I left out is, you know, I went over and did a stint in treasury and I was like, oh, by the way, can you implement this AP automation solution, uh, AP automation solution? And so there I am right back in tech, right? And then I move up to FP&A and it's like, hey, one of your goals is to try and get the organization to have good adoption of our, you know, BI platform. Um, and so, you know, it's just like every step of the way, it was always, you know, here, you know, take your business knowledge, but also apply it to whatever, you know, like system platform. Um, and I fought it for so long because, you know, I had a chance to come back in into the, you know, one streamer system space. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. And then just through a series of events, I, I ended up landing back in this one stream role at print pack and, and I, I think it, there was just a moment in my head where I was like, as much as you've tried to fight, fight, fight this, like, what happens if you just go all in? And yeah. I decided at that moment I was going to go all in. And, you know, honestly, I haven't looked back. Um, you know, I, 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 I do look back a little bit, I guess, and say, like, what was I thinking? Why was I fighting this? Um, because I do, I do have a passion for it and I do like it and I do think that, the reason why every step of my career that always became my path is because it was something I was good at and it was a way I could add value to, you know, the organization and, and the processes. And um, so, yeah, just, just don't fight fate. I like that. Listen to that. Everyone, all college people don't fight fate. <laughs> <laughs> so was that your first encounter with, one stream was with Simpris or and, and and how what or if that wasn't what was your first encounter and how how was that experience for you yeah so i was really in the fighting fate um i was really in the fighting fate mode when we um when we started you know my first introduction to one stream which to be honest with you i don't even really remember at the time um i was working in fpna and uh clark care who is like an atlanta one stream celebrity um so a shout out to him. Um, he he was you know leading the implementation and the selection of a consolidations tool. So at the time they were considering you know HFM and a plan, you know OneStream. Ultimately they went with OneStream. So I probably almost certainly sat in on meetings because he you know would always say like Hey, can you come? You know, tell me what you think. Um, but really, honestly, my first memory of OneStream was I was voluntold at six months pregnant oh. to go to Splash in Las Vegas. Um, and Vegas oh. really just isn't my scene. I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. Um, and so, you know, it just really wasn't my favorite experience. And so <laughs> for the longest time, I was like, oh, one stream, you know, but um, I guess a plug for Splash really quick. I have been back to many Splashes and even had the opportunity to present at a Splash. Splash is wonderful. Um, 
I just was, you know, fighting fate. That's where I was in my career journey. And um, and when you're fighting fate and six months pregnant in Vegas, it just it just wasn't a good time. So, um, but yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely not, not some smells in there that probably help with being. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of elevator rides were pretty painful, and um, they actually messed up my room so they were so kind as to give me a pool view and um so i was getting to hear the pool party until like 4 a.m vegas time and i just remember being in the hotel with pillows on my head being like this can't be worse this can't be worse but but you know hey like as i said you know to you a few minutes ago like i'm all in like everything's come full circle now and it's it's crazy and funny how life turns out and and, you know, now I would, you know, welcome the opportunity to go back to Splash in Vegas, sans pregnancy. Um, so that yeah. would be great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, I'm curious, in what ways do you feel like your experience now with one stream coupled with your kind of industry background overall will now contribute to kind of what you're doing in the consulting capacity here at Architect? Yeah, so, I, you know, I'm hopeful that it's going to be an asset to, to archetype and to our clients. You know, I think being on the other side, especially not being in an administrator role my whole career, I've had the opportunity to be an end user of one stream and, you know, be the one giving presentations um, or preparing data for presentations um, and really seeing like the types of things that you need and how you need to get at the data and what's hard and what's impossible and, and what makes life easy and, um, what designs, what design decisions are fatal flaws versus what design decisions really make the process smooth, right? And like, you know, even on my first engagement, you know, I've had some conversations already of like, okay, but do they need this? Like, or they're not necessarily saying they need this now, but like, do we think they're going to need this? Because that may change, you know, the way that we would design the application or thinking through, you know, some of those downstream impl implications of, you know, sometimes if, especially if you're new to one stream, you don't always know what you might need. And so I think that's a unique position that I've been where I've been on the end user side, I've been on the administration side. Um, and now I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to be on this side. So, um, you know, I really hope it will be an asset um, and, and helpful to our clients. No, yeah, I mean, I'll be willing to say I, I know it's going to be. <laughs> Your background is definitely one that you've worked with a lot of our team for a long time. And uh, it, it's it's been one for sure that I know is going to be a, a, a long career for you here at Har Archetype and a happy career. Uh, yes. So we're excited to have you here, Blair. Um, and definitely everybody connect with Blair on LinkedIn. And I'm sure she's fine with even having anybody reach out if they have any questions on possibly implementing one stream or uh, even yeah. any other systems questions overall so uh definitely reach out to her and uh, thanks again blair for coming on and and everybody tune in next time and uh see who else we bring on from from archetype for for y'all to meet awesome thanks mitchell